Sports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today begins the beginning of the Mirage Turbo Build. So we're definitely going to dive in. I'm super excited. I actually got the parts from the machine shop and they're ready. So let's do it. Okay, check out all of the goodies we got back from CW Pimps Machine Shop and more. So now um, that all of this is balanced, um, I'm going to show you where I was told that Eagle Rods and CP Pistons are usually within a couple grams of each other. So they're actually good to go right out the box. He checked the weight to make sure they were all equal, and they were. Same deal with the rods. They were all equal, but the harmonic balancer was not. So we have two holes that were drilled here to get the weight out. Um, time and mark there. Everything is perfect. This is set and ready to go. Same deal with the pressure plate the pressure plate was of course a little out of balance so you can see the marks here for balancing and it has oh wait where is it let me keep spinning this until we get to the mark but it has marks on it to show you which way is up so let me see if i can find it here we go all right so we got a g there and then on the flywheel which did have to be balanced you see that there on here there's also a g so that's how you make sure you put the pressure plate on properly and is completely 100% balanced. Um, and that is, let me double check if you have any more marks for uh, balancing, which that is one, just a couple grams off. And same deal here. This must have really been out around. Um, because they drilled pretty deep in there to get this thing balanced, which is perfectly fine. These are the perfect spots to uh, balance. And back here is another place to balance, but this one is a um, factory balance from the uh, manufacturer of this uh, flywheel. So that is normal and basically we match G to G and that is completely set up and ready. So now we're gonna take a look at the crankshaft just so you can see what balance marks were placed onto it. So this crankshaft was cleaned. The journals were micro polished so there's no slag or anything on there. They lubricate it to make sure it doesn't rust because it is steel. Um, and then on this one, you could see balancing marks here. All right, and turn it around. Some more there, a little bit there, more up here. So this, this crankshaft is 110% balanced uh with the harmonic balancer and flywheel and pressure plate so this one is ready to rock and we are ready to assemble so let's move on to our engine stand okay and this is a engine hoist they come in a couple different shapes sizes of course depending on what you're using it for um some people are actually unfamiliar with engine hoist. Um, and this is more kind of typical the way they look. 
um, added a sticker there eons ago, um, very long time ago, had to be over eight years, but anyway, um, so basically this is just to hold the motor. It goes in many different positions depending on what you need. And then you tighten up these bolts to where you need them. And then you can put your block on. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Is we're gonna take the safety pin, make sure it doesn't spin. All right. Then we're gonna take the pole out that spins it. Usually comes out a lot easier, but you get the point. And then what we're gonna do, that down gently, we're gonna slide this piece out so we can bolt it to the engine, then lift the engine into here. So it comes out like so. You can bolt it up any way you want. Then when you're done, slide it back in. Put your pin, as you can see, you can turn the engine any which way you want. There's holes 360, and that is pretty much an engine stand out of the box. All right, so let's uh, connect it, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Basically, what you're going to want to do is purchase some extra studs that are a little bit longer than normal. So if you have uh, about two, three inch stud factory which you probably don't um you might want to get a five inch just so you can fit flywheel and you can space everything out real nice and comes out real nice so um definitely do that go to your local uh, hardware store pick those up before you get started and then we're going to take it from there luckily i already have a couple of those so I'm going to um, put that onto the block and we're gonna get started. Okay, and once everything is bolted on, it should look something like this. Make sure you put the lock on there so it doesn't swing and hurt somebody. Um, and if you have this uh, park next to a car, you don't want it to hit it. So make sure you put your lock pin in there. And I'm looking for let me see, this is the back, there we go, 4G93, this is 1.8. But um, yeah, so basically uh, we're gonna start assembling starting with the bottom end. So we're going to um, lay down the crankshaft on the new bearings and all of that good stuff and get started there. I actually, had a full balancing done of everything here, <clears throat> including uh, bearing clearances done on the rods and blocks. So uh, basically what that consists of is you take something called plastic gauge, I'll pop an image up over here so you can see that. And uh, basically you um, bolt everything down to torque specification and basically is measuring how much clearance you have on your bearings, which ultimately decipher what type of oil you should use. If you go to your machine shop and you tell them you want tighter clearances, we're talking zero W5 or five double W zero, however which way you do that there, or, um, you know, pretty much water, pretty much. But um, if you have standard clearances, um, which is to the OEM manufacturer specification, then you can run, of course, because this is an older engine, you can run your 1030, you know, 1040 and be perfectly fine. But because we live here in Florida, um, uh, it's good to break in the motor with the 10 uh, W30. And then you want to go thicker because the heat here is ridiculous and this is a cast iron block, it doesn't make it any better. So you can go 2050 later on as soon as you start making some uh, good power. But for breaking 1030, conventional, regular, basic stuff, just to clean it up and that'll do it. So uh, we don't have to clearance any of the bearings on the bottom, which is awesome. So that means we can pop the crank in, use our assembly lube and get started. 
Okay, so we are going to unscrew every single one of these and we're going to take out the girdle because we have bearings to place in there. This will be the perfect time to thread chase your holes to make sure you don't have any contaminants or anything that could mess up your torque specification when you're bolting down your crankshaft. So we're going to do that. I think I put that one down all the way, but so yeah, we're going to lift up the girdle and start placing bearings. And also you want to make sure you hand clean out each uh, journal with some rubbing alcohol or something uh, equivalent to kind of clean everything up. Uh, I heard they have uh, something called engine prep, which pretty much does that, but and also partially lubricates, which is awesome. So uh, we're going to do that, drop down the bearings and get it started. Okay, so um, we have the bearings in and there are two different kinds. There are solid and the one that has the grooves in it. So you'll see they'll have like a slight groove in the middle for oil. Those always go to the block and then these, which are smooth, go to the girdle, which is that guy right there. Also, this engine runs a thrust washer, which goes here and here. So, yep, that's it right there. And then this is the part number for the thrust washer. Perfect. Uh, ACL, of course, best of the best. And as you see, there's no thrust washer on the girdle. It is only for the block. So technically there's no getting it wrong. I'm gonna show you what it looks like and show you how it goes on. Okay, so one thrust washer goes on this side facing out because if you look, there is nothing on the back side but everything on the front. So we're gonna slide these in here and on the opposing side, and we're gonna make sure we put a little bit of uh, grease and or assembly lube to hold it in place. And that'll be perfect. Okay, so just a little bit gets this exactly where it needs to be. And that'll be perfect for when we drop in the crankshaft. So now we can start applying our assembly lube to the face of the bearings and lay down the crankshaft. Okay, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to slide these in. They only go one way, the lock, and when you do it, you want to make sure that it doesn't catch your finger when you run it across, so make sure you push it all the way down. You don't want oil or anything behind it, so uh, we're going to give a little example on the last guy, so... We're gonna push it down and then run your finger across on both sides. It's catching over here. That means it's not all the way down. All right. All righty. That's good to go. That is perfect. And we got the thrust and everything in here. Perfect, perfect. Um, we're ready to put the girdle back on. Um, we're gonna slide some assembly lube on this guy here. And we should be good to go. Okay, so girdle is in. We are ready for ARP. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna make sure we use the ARP lubricant on here on both sides. So we're gonna add it here and here. Washer and nut, uh, foot pounds on this paper here. So let's just twist these in with the lubricant and we'll take it from there. Okay, so after those are hand tight, you wanna double check them and screw them all the way down if need be. So 
grab your tool and screw them down. So we're gonna tighten these down and we'll keep it going. Okay, these are snug down. You want to make sure that they are all the way down, not too tight, but the reason you want to do this by hand is because if you're using a tool, you can't feel if there's a tight spot that needs to be worked out. But if you thread chase the threads beforehand, you shouldn't have any uh, worry about tight spots at all. So um, we're going to torque this down. Let's see what the torque specifications are. And they are, let me open this up, up 60 foot pounds. So we're gonna do that accordingly and we'll be good to go. So it says um, do it in three steps and I completely agree with that. So I'm gonna do uh, 10 just to make sure everything is down in the right position and then make sure it spins nicely. Um, then 30, then 60 which you could actually go higher if everything sits properly. You could probably do a 40, 50, and 60. Depends, but as long as you get to the end goal, you should be all good. Okay, everything is nicely torqued down, and you wanna make sure that everything is rotating right. If you can't do this, you did something wrong. So go back, uh, take everything loose and repeat make sure your bearings are facing the right way Make sure you didn't damage anything and move on from there, but she is Gliding I love it so um, I think this is the fun part where we get to assemble the piston and rod combo So let's move on to that Okay, so Let's dive into these and what we're going to do is we're going to skip the rings for right now because these are going to be measured properly and installed properly. So, what we want to do is get our pistons out and start assembling. So, these are the locks. They are... And we're gonna install these rods with those pistons. Okay, so the reason um, Honda rods were used, including Honda pistons, is because of the wrist pin diameter. The stock wrist pin diameter on the Mirage factory is 19 millimeter. And um, even on the aftermarket, it's still 19 millimeter. So, uh, on a Honda, it's actually 22 millimeter. So the point of failure is very much less. Um, and probably not needed for 500 horsepower, but a little extra security doesn't hurt. So here we are. So first things first, we're gonna take our piston. And if you look, the valve set is different from side to side. So nine times out of 10, uh, your intake side valve seat or um, dimples, let's just call them dimples, are bigger for the intake side. So this would have to face the intake side, which is the back of this motor, okay? And then the exhaust side is usually smaller. So these have a smaller dimple and this can face the exhaust side, which is the front of the motor, the side that you open the hood and you see first. So we're gonna um, hook these rods up according to that. And on the connecting rods themselves, they don't have a front or back order. So you can pretty much put them however you see fit. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, have this area facing a certain way. So let's start putting them together. And I definitely think that the locks should face towards the exhaust side. So it'll be this way. Um, but that's just me. Um, either way, it's not gonna make too much of a difference. Um, but simple enough. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wrist pin, we're gonna open it up. 
Okay, two hands will be needed. And you wanna use a light oil to make sure that it is not dry when you slide it in. Because remember, all of these parts are moving. Everything needs to have some type of oil. This oil um, probably being a little bit thinner, you can probably use white lithium grease or something like that. But regardless to what, it needs to have something on it. So we're gonna apply some and insert. Okay, and when you slide it in, it's gonna look just like this. Okay. Looks beautiful. I love it. So um, after that, uh, we can start installing the. And I'm going to show you how to go about that in just a second. Okay, so popped open the bag and we do not have spiral locks, which is fine. Um, these are just your uh, common C clip. And basically what we're going to do is just the same way you put in the piston rings, which I'm going to show you uh, in this engine build series. It's pretty much the same way you put in this uh, lock here. So we're going to put in one side first, and then we're going to put in the other side. So um, basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you put the C facing towards this little uh, area right here. So if you come back and you want to take apart the piston, you can have the C directly here. So you could just pop it out. But either way, you should still be able to pop it out. Um, that's what this area is for. So let me show you how to put it in. So what you're going to do is you're going to place, let me see again, need two hands okay but you can see that's where it sits so you take one side let's go this way and push it into the bore all the way around and then you're going to take your finger and squeeze against it to compress the C so they're getting closer together and you're gonna slide it in. So let me get to that point and I'll be right back. Okay, and now you see the clip is in and the best thing to do to get um, this in uh, with a little bit of assistance is to use is an Allen key. I use the biggest one and what I did was I wrapped the tip that I was using to pry with tape just to push it into position. So you got to do this eight times for a four cylinder. And yeah, then the piston will be set. So it's a little rough, um, especially if you're a first timer. But once you get the hang of it, it should pop in easy. And with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. And again, I want to give a huge shout out to CW Pins. Um, extremely professional, um, great place to get machine work done, period, bar none. But um, if you're new here and this is the type of stuff you like to watch, definitely consider hitting that uh, subscribe button and hit the bell icon for updated notifications. And until next episode, remember, Knowledge is power.